It's easy to click and drag objects onto your scene, but what if you wanted to have objects continuously load to create an endless runner style game? In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to spawn obstacles automatically onto your scene. If you have not watched my mobile joystick tutorial yet, go ahead and watch that video first because we will be using the script and assets from that video for this tutorial. The link for that is in the description. Now if we go ahead and open up our project, we should have a spaceship moving through space that we can move by clicking and dragging our mouse. And in Photoshop, I crudely drew an asteroid for our object to avoid. So let's go ahead and import this into our scene. And the first thing we want to do is add a circle collider to our asteroid. When it comes to enemies, I like to shrink the hitbox on these colliders to give players a little room to avoid these obstacles. It tends to give gameplay a much smoother and better experience. And since we will be dealing with collisions, we don't want to use translate to move our asteroid. Instead, we will want to use velocity. So we will need to go ahead and add a rigid body 2D to our asteroid. And then let's just go ahead and set our gravity scale equal to zero. Next, let's add a script to this object and let's just call it asteroid. The first thing we want to do is set up a reference for speed so that we can tell our scene how fast we like our asteroids to move. So let's create a public float called speed and let's just set the default to 10. Then let's create a private reference for our rigid body 2D and let's just call this one RB. Then in our start function, let's find our rigid body 2D and set it to our RB reference by using this.getComponent rigid body 2D. And an easy way to move our asteroid from right to left is to set our rigid body's velocity to have a negative x value. So let's create a new vector 2 and for our first parameter let's set it to be negative speed and for our y parameter let's just set it to 0 because we don't want it to move on the y axis at all. This will move our asteroid from right to left at a constant rate based on our speed value. Then go ahead and save the script and go back into Unity and press play. We should see that our asteroid flies off the left side of the screen. And if we were to duplicate the asteroid a few times and move them randomly around the screen, we should see that they all move together along the x-axis. Although there's a problem here. Even after these asteroids go off the screen, they remain in the scene. This could be problematic as time goes on and we have thousands of asteroids floating through space. Having too many objects on the scene could drop our frame rate and even cause our game to crash. So instead we want to adjust our script to remove objects from our scene once they fly off the screen. We can do this easily with our screen bounds calculation that we use in our screen bounds tutorial video. So back in our script up at the top, let's create a private vector 2 reference for our screen bounds calculation. Then in our start function, let's define our screen bounds variable. I'm just going to paste this line in, but basically what it does is, is it defines the boundaries of our screen on an x and y axis. Since we are using screen to world point, our screen bounds.x will be a negative value. So our, in our update function, we just need to check to see if our asteroid's x position is less than screen bounds.x, which is equivalent to saying, is it to the left of the screen? We can do this by writing if transform.position.x is less than screen bounds.x. If it is, let's put destroy this.gameObject. This line basically removes our game object from the scene. Then if we go back into Unity, we should see that once our asteroid reaches the limit of the screen, it is removed. But since it's removed the minute it touches the left side, visually the asteroids appear to vanish before they even leave the screen. To avoid this, I usually just pad the screen bounds, or to keep it simple, you can just do screen bounds dot x multiplied by two. 
Now this is cool, but it requires us to manually add asteroids to the scene. Instead we want to load new asteroids automatically, and we can do this very easily by creating a prefab of our asteroid object and using instantiate to spawn it. So first thing we want to do is grab our asteroid game object and drag it into our project window. This creates a prefab of the object. Basically a prefab is a game object containing all of its elements. This includes the rigid body, the circle collider, and the script that makes it move. Then we need to create a script to deploy our asteroids on the screen. We can create an empty game object to hold the script, but for now let's just add it to the camera object. And let's call this new script Deploy Asteroids. And let's go ahead and open it. The first thing we want to do is create a reference for our asteroid prefab. We can do this by creating a new public game object called asteroid prefab. And then below it, let's create a new float for respawn time. And let's just set it to one for now. This will be used to tell our function how often we want to spawn asteroids. Next, let's create a new function to spawn our asteroids. Let's just call this spawn enemy. Then we're going to use instantiate to load our prefab onto the scene. So let's create a new game object. And let's just use A as a reference. Then let's set it to instantiate. And let's put our asteroid prefab as the parameter so it knows what to clone. And then since we want to clone this as a game object, let's put as game object at the end. In this one line, we just added our asteroid to our scene. Now we can use our reference of A to manipulate it. Since our object will move from right to left, we're going to want to place this object off to the right of the screen. In order to do this, we will need to calculate our screen boundaries again. So let's copy and paste that from our previous script, including the reference from the top. Then let's modify our asteroid's position by setting its transform.position. For the value, let's create a new vector 2 and set the x coordinate to screen bounds dot x times negative 2. We use negative 2 to place the asteroid way off the screen on the right. Then we want our asteroid to randomly be placed along the y-axis to give us something to constantly move to avoid. To do this, we will use random.range, and for the minimum value, let's use negative screen bounds.y. And for the maximum parameter, let's use a positive screen bounds.y value. Now the only thing we have left to do is set up a way for us to call this spawn enemy function every one second. For this, we will use a quarantine. Quarantines can look scary, but they're actually rather simple. I plan to discuss in depth how they work in a future video, but for now just follow along with what I do. Let's start with a normal function and let's just call it asteroid wave. Then inside it, let's just call our spawn enemy function. Then in order to make this a quarantine, we need to add IE numerator in front of our function. And then back at the top, we need to call our quarantine by using start quarantine and passing our new function as the parameter. And then lastly, to get our new function to loop every one second, we need to wrap our function in a loop. For this, we will just use while true, but you can replace this with a boolean instead. Maybe a boolean that can be changed to true when you're ready for this game to start. And then the most important line, we write yield, return, new, wait for seconds, and let's use our respawn time reference to, to declare how long we'd like to wait. In this case, it's just one second. Now if we save the script and go back into Unity, we just need to drag our asteroid prefab into our inspector so our script knows what object we want it to clone. And then if we press play, we should see that our asteroids prefab is automatically cloned onto our scene. And there you have it. In an upcoming video, we will discuss collisions and how to detect if the spaceship collided with one of these asteroids. So make sure to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell 
so that you don't miss a future video.